Uh, Madam Speaker, you and I have uh, disagreed uh, politically on many things over the years, but we were never disagreeable to each other. And, Madam Speaker, I have to say, my girls told me, tell the Speaker how much we admire her. You've been incredibly effective as the leader of your caucus. You know, the younger generation today has a saying, game recognizes game. Former House Speaker John Boehner in a touching tribute to Nancy Pelosi as she prepares to end her historic tenure as Speaker. Wow. Plus the latest on efforts to prevent a government shutdown as lawmakers buy more time to hammer out a deal. We'll have the latest from Capitol Hill. And we're also digging into the latest polling that shows Donald <clears throat> Trump way behind Florida Governor Ron DeSantis for the next Republican presidential nomination. And Ron DeSantis hasn't even said whether he's running or not. The, right. The numbers also come with a warning sign that may explain why the governor is constantly trying to prove that he can out Trump Trump. Well, and we'll yeah, explain that. Yeah, it's really something. I mean, you even look at the you look at the, the Hill headline this morning uh, about a Quinnipiac poll that has Donald Trump at his lowest approval rating. Uh, since 2015, he's down to 31 um, percent. I, I heard I heard Lemire coming in. You know, you, you, you got the movie. I think it was a Pacino movie, Scent of a Lady. Yeah. Um, Scent of a Woman. Classic. Scent of a yeah. Woman. There you go. Scent Where's of a, this going? Scent of a Woman. Well, <laughs> Lemire has has a movie title for Donald Trump. A whiff of a loser. I did hear that. <laughs> he said he said he's got a whiff of a loser. Yeah. And I was like, wow, okay, listen. Yeah. Boston misses a couple of couple of trades. Yeah. And this guy just the, the teeth come There's out. a bitterness shows, there, isn't there? It's just <laughs> coming through everything. Sin of a woman, whiff of a loser, mm -hmm. uh, starring Donald Trump. Um, but, but really, we talk about that, but let's go back. Ba John Boehner wasn't Speaker of the House that long ago. Yeah. And, you know, that's the way when I was there and, and before I got to Congress, after I left Congress, that's the way leaders treated each other, Republicans and Democrats. I remember Newt Gingrich, a guy who... By the time he left, was loathed. I remember having so much respect for Democrats who Newt had tried to destroy uh, individuals uh, in, in the chamber when he was saying goodbye, um, giving him a standing ovation out of respect from someone who chose to serve their country and who had worked with them sometimes. This is, this is, by the way, what Republicans used to do, what John Boehner did, when they didn't lose elections every year. Let me say that again. They think it's weak. Like, uh, who's the guy who wants to be speaker now? Kevin. Mike Kevin. Kevin, yeah. Mike Kevin. Kevin McCarthy didn't go to Nancy Pelosi's farewell speech. Unheard of. That would have never happened before. He said he was busy. Yeah, Reports he was are busy. that, that I, he may have been in a meeting with Stephen Miller. You, you tell your staff, I need to be on the floor when Nancy Pelosi... Uh, has her farewell address. And you don't worry. If people in your caucus don't like that, you say, listen, I'm in the game to win here, and there's nothing wrong with being nice and respectful to people we work with. It sounds radical to Republicans, but again, these Republicans are Republicans that lose every year now, so maybe they should try being, like, nice, respectful, decent, uh, at least pretend, even if they don't feel it in their hearts. Yeah, that was such a striking moment, not just because it was kind of sweet to see, but for exactly the reasons you just laid out, which is John Boehner was Speaker of the House until fall of 2015. That was only seven years ago. Think of where we are now and what a marker that speech was yesterday to remind us how low the Republican Party has sunk, where just a, two months ago, less than two months ago, you had prominent Republicans mocking Nancy Pelosi after her husband was almost killed inside their house by a man who was looking for Nancy Pelosi, perhaps to assassinate her. So just think about that space of seven years. John Boehner, a man who now weeps for Speaker Pelosi because of the way he feels about her, what she represents, the example she set for his own daughters. And now exactly. you have 
members of the Republican Party mocking Nancy Pelosi in an assassination attempt at her home. It is a really yeah. stunning snapshot of what's happened to the party in such a short time. And that's what they did. And, and Kevin McCarthy, remember his statement that he, he when he was handing the gavel to oh, then Speaker Pelosi, don't even. saying that that he he wanted to what hit her with it, uh, yeah. hit her I in mean, the head or something like that. Again, <clears throat> this is third grade stuff. You think you're going to get a laugh from something like this when actually people just look at you and say you, you don't deserve no. to actually say, no. represent anybody. And again. Mika, this is just, just, let's just keep, we, Mika and I did something last night. We practiced mindfulness. We watched a couple of shows on another network. And it really is extraordinary how stupid they are. When no, it, you're when it comes, to accept that they're, they're trying when, their best. They're trying their best. When it comes to what they think, like, strategy is, like, what will work for them, they think they're owning the libs. And they're not. You just sit there going, oh, come no, on, No, you man. have to accept they're doing the best they can. I, okay, I accept they're doing the best they can. They need to do better. Not for me. Not for you. Uh, not for America. For themselves. Yeah. And again, well, it's returning. they need to recalibrate because when they think, Willie, that they're owning the libs, when they think they're, like, getting a shot off at their political opponents uh, politically, they're just shooting themselves in the foot. And, you, and I, I just I put my head in my hands last night going, oh, my God, <laughs> the Washington generals, they're never going to be able to stop Metal Arc Lemon like this. <laughs> Joe, you've got to stop watching that. Just go back and watch Arrested Development. Just something that brings joy to your life. Let Bateman one. and Arnett and Tambor yes. and all oh, the rest of them so guide good. you through your evenings. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, how much more evidence do you need that it loses elections, that it's not working? I mean, just look at, we're going to talk about Donald Trump's poll numbers again now, mm -hmm. sliding the party. Look at the results of the midterm elections. People looked at all of this stuff and said, no, thank you. On the other hand, for some of the people you're talking about, they're rating in that world are good. They get people listening to their podcasts. The echo chamber is echoing back to them and giving them the things they want out of it. So I don't suspect they'll stop. But if you're a politician, if you're a Republican interested in, in winning elections, there's just a whole lot of evidence that it's not working for you right now. Along with Joe, well, Willie, and me. By the way, the evidence, me. 2017, they lost. I, oh, my God. 2018, they I lost. I mean, you do have to, to say it. I'm hoping somebody will hear they you. Lost. Rana? 2020 they lost. Kev? 2022.